All right, this is a brief overview of how to do curve fitting using tools that are in Desmos. So we're going to try and fit a curve that describes uh, the shape of a bowl, which we would use for our surface uh, of revolution problem. And what we want to do is turn that into some relatively low order polynomial. So the first thing we do in Desmos is actually add the image. So I'm going to add some image. And then i got to find it. And Desmos brings in that image. And there's a couple of things we're going to want to do with this image. It's kind of small. That won't really matter because we can zoom in. But to get nice kind of values, I think we want to make it a little bit larger. Again, we're going to set a scale. So that's not going to matter too much. The other thing we absolutely de definitely want to do is try and make it be symmetric about the x-axis. So right now, it is clearly not symmetric about the right y-axis. So I'm going to drag this down until we have just about as much above as below. That looks uh, not great, but not too bad. So there we go. That isn't bad at all. And then we can just zoom in to be able to fit our, our points better. So there we go. All we care about here, remember, is the bowl. All the other stuff is sort of ancillary. It was really just there so I could hold the bowl straight. When you take your picture, it's really very important that your picture be perpendicular to the table and catch the sort of projection of the bowl and not be any kind of weird skewed perspective. All right, the next thing we need to do is make a table of points that Desmos is going to let us fit. So we'll go here and we'll add a table called x1 and y1 sort of ungradably. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to change the color to something that will stand out nicely. So I have a green bowl. A green line is probably not a good idea. So I'm going to make it uh, orange will probably pop. We'll see. I'm also going to turn on that I want the points to be draggable. I don't want the line on. We'll see why in a second. But we go back here and we need to make a bunch of standard points. And I'm just going to put them in at like uh, minus 3 and 0 and minus 2 and 0 and minus 1 and 0 and 0 and 0 and 1 and 0. Um, I'm going to restrict myself to only a handful of points because I don't want too many points makes it hard to fit. You could probably do some more, and we might add some later. Also, notice I didn't actually put them anywhere special. I just put them on the, y, on the x axis because it was easy to get them there. It was easy to type. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag these guys so that they line up on the bowl, the curve of the bowl. So something like this. And the goal is to basically describe the surface of the bowl as best I can without using too many points. I think I'm going to want a couple more. So I'm going to down here and I'm going to add some more guys. I'm going to add them again at the same kind of place, like minus 3 and 0, minus 2 and 0, minus 1 and 0. It does not matter where I add them because, of course, I'm going to be moving them over to where I want them to be. Something like that. And I could probably pick one more. It doesn't really matter. Um, hopefully, if you do it right, it's not going to matter that much anyway. It's going to be a little insensitive to the point you pick. Uh, what we do want to do is, like, this guy seems to be a little bit off to my eye, so I'm going to drag him down a little. So I believe that that's probably a little closer to the actual shape of the bowl. Now I have to tell Desmos that that's what I want. So what we do is we set up uh, a relation, which looks like an equation, but instead of an equal sign, we use the tilde. And instead of x and y, we use the table values. So I say something like, I want y1 is related to, and now I can type any function I want, and uh, Desmos will try and find values that make it work. So I might say, I think it's just some constant. I'm going to call it a1. That's obviously pretty dumb. <laughs> it does not work very well. I'm going to say, maybe it's a constant plus some linear term, and I'm going to put an x1 here. And already does a not bad job. That's the line that best fits our bowl. Our bowl doesn't really look like a line, so that's not terribly good, but it's not terribly bad. And then I just sort of go up. So I say C1, and maybe there's going to be uh, some sort of uh, quadratic term looking a little better. And then maybe there'll be even some cubic term looking much better. And then in the project as assigned, we're really wanting to be limited to basically a fourth order 
basically, as you take more and more points, as you might expect, you get a limit that's closer and closer, but now your polynomial is getting more and more unwieldy. In principle, if we could take a vast number of high powers of x, then we could get arbitrarily close to our bowl, but that would be sort of awful. Um, we'd have to integrate all those terms. This leads towards the idea of a power series expansion of a function, which is something you'll visit in a later calculus class, but not this one. For my own um, surety, I'd like to actually see if this is symmetric, if I did a good job making it symmetric. So I'm going to actually do something kind of weird, and I'm going to say, hey, give me a function of x that's the same as my relationship of x, except that I want it to be just x instead of x1s. So I go b1 x and c1 x square, and then d1 x cubed, and then e1 x to the fourth. And I'm going to type something badly. Da, 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 da. Oh, up here, because this should have been to the fourth. Some error. All right, so those are our two guys. And notice that the new curve exactly goes through the error curve, and I've gained really nothing there. So now I have a function that works anywhere that I could plug in any kind of point to. And then also kind of interestingly is I can say, hey, what happens if I flip that function about the y axis, about the x axis. And what I see here is, yeah, I think that my curve is believably symmetric, that I have actually gone in as far below as above, and that seems about right. That's what we would expect. Obviously, the curve is symmetric, but I'm saying that it passes through the other side of the bowl about as well as the first one did. If it had not, then I would have probably had to revisit probably the centering of the bowl more than anything else. All right, and then we can sort of set a scale, which we might as well do. So I'm gonna pop back, I'm gonna unzoom. And you'll notice that I conveniently put a little ruler on the bottom. So I'm gonna just try and fit a distance. And the clever way to do that is to make another table and pick two points. Um, I'm gonna pick sort of like minus six and at minus four and say minus four at minus four, just to get two points on there. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, hey, make this thing, uh, let's have it pop as red, it's a little bit better. Also, let's turn on the line, and then, oops, let's make these draggable as well. So now I see that my segment's contained, and I'm going to zoom in, oops, a while, and I'm going to say, oh, well, so let's pick two places I can easily identify. So how about from... Uh, let's say all the way from 20 and then 15 on my ruler, as parallel to the ruler as I can get it. That's not so bad. We see that our y value hardly changed, so I'm not too worried about that. I'll treat those as basic with the same y value. And I see that my x distances are um, minus 1.3 minus minus. 3.354. So that says that I have two of my scale units here, right, which you can see is basically two boxes long, equals five centimeters. So I'll be able to convert my distances that come out up here into centimeters. Although, honestly, the best way to do this is actually just take your volume in these arbitrary units and then multiply by the conversion factor cubed by five over two cubed and that will convert the volume that you get using sort of these abstract math points that don't have any particular meaning into a physical thing. You could, in principle, take all of these coordinates, multiply them by the conversion factor, and then fit to that, and that would work, but is sort of the issue. It's, it's sort of a lot of work to do that. It's probably a lot easier to factor all of them and then um, just convert at the end, and sort of the principles of geometry tell us that since all of the scaling will be the same, we will be okay just cubing it to get a volume. And really, that's about it. We have our fit, and we see it as a fourth order polynomial. This thing could be relatively easily converted and integrated up, um, maybe not trivially. One of the things that you might want to think about is, does the function suffer a lot if I throw out the higher term? And I think we might argue that uh, maybe.
yeah, it, it suffers too much, so we probably shouldn't do that. Uh, we should come back to this. You'll also notice that our functions do this really weird thing out here and up here, and we don't really care. We only really fit them to be true between the lowest and highest values of x. So it's only really true between minus 1.91 and 0.57. So if we were doing our integral, those would be our bounds. All right, we would not include anybody outside, so we don't really care if the function goes crazy. There we go.